Hello there, today I want to give you a bit of an update on what's going on with Open Assistant. About 10 months ago, we launched this initiative to reproduce ChatGPT in the open and to collect all the data necessary. And it's been it's been a great 10 months so far. So where are we and what's going on? I'm not really good at building up tension or anything like this. So I'll give you the TLDR in the front and then we'll go into stuff at the end. The TLDR is we're going to stop Open Assistant. We're going to put a line under it, say, we are done, our mission is accomplished, we've done what we've set out to do, and now it's the time for other people to continue. It has a bunch of reasons, and I know people will disagree with this. Some people will be upset with this. People wanted us to be the open AI, the actual open AI and so on. Um, for us, it's really good where we are right now. And we don't want this to become a zombie project that just kind of carries on forever. And, and there's just kind of a brand that at some point has achieved something great. We want this to be the thing we achieved to be remembered for that. And yeah, to say now it's time for someone else. So we'll go into the individual reasons a little bit. But this is the short of the story. Now, why have we decided on that? When we started, there was nothing. There was ChatGPT. There was a paper from OpenAI that everyone thought could be how ChatGPT was created. But there was extremely little in terms of data, especially open data. There was extremely little in terms of model, there was no knowledge around of how to do how to train these models well, and so on. And there was no infrastructure in place to do any of that. And we came into that. And we, I want to say we paved the way in many ways, we have built up a data collection infrastructure and collected data that will live forever. We have the most ethical data set on the planet. Every single data point was contributed with full consent and full intent by the contributors. And that's awesome. And the fact that we have achieved that is absolutely mind bogglingly amazing. We've also trained models for sure. We've also done some RL experiments and supervised fine tuning and model mixing and even mixing with synthetic data, trying out all of this stuff. Other people are going to train better models. It, they already have, right? People are going to train bigger models, better models. People are going to make prettier chat interfaces than our chat interface. So all of this was fleeting, was experiments by us, which was cool but other people are good at it as well. What only we could do was collect the data. And so I'm very proud to say that we have made the absolute best of that momentum that existed at that time. We have tried to not waste a single ounce of human effort in the data collection. And I believe that's what we have achieved. And that's what we want to be remembered as. What people don't realize is that, you know, efforts like this, require a lot of work. And we're so grateful for the contributors, but we're also extremely grateful for the volunteer human moderators that go after every flagged message that go after every, you know, cluster of down votes and so on. Uh, this is giant amounts of effort. And over time, people move on. And not only the moderators move on, the programmers move on, and the contributors move on. And we'll just have to recognize that it was a special time when everyone was super excited, we could all make time to some degree to come together and achieve something that could only be achieved at that very moment. And now, frankly, we're overloaded. Uh, many people are moving on many people don't have time anymore. And of all the people who complain that things aren't moving fast enough, even at this point, um, you don't have capacity either. So we want we'd rather want to say, okay, we've done our job, we've collected the data, that data can be used from now until forever. And we have various confirmations of big institutions that the data is really high quality. Uh, so that data set will live forever. And we'd rather say that's our that's our work product. And 
and yeah, leave it at that. Now we're obviously going to release the data we've gotten so far. And we're also going to try to release a lot of the chat data, especially the ones with annotations that we've got, because we also know people have put work into that. And we, again, we don't want to waste a single amount of, of human work that we don't need to waste. So we will release all of these things. Um, hopefully soon, we'll have to do cleaning and all that we did for the first data set. And then we're also going to uh, send some send some goodies, hopefully to the people who are high on the leaderboard list, because these are like the real heroes is everyone who contributed code data moderation and whatnot. And we want to want to want to thank the top contributors there a little bit. So if we can find you if we can, you know, contact you through the data that we have on the website. Well, we'll reach out to you if you're if you happen to be on top of the leaderboard. Uh, also, our paper got accepted to the data sets and benchmark tracks of NeurIPS. And that's also very cool. If you have contributed data, and if you want to be acknowledged, uh, I invite you to go to the account section. So here you can click on your name, you can go to your account. And then there is a page that registers your name of, you know, being acknowledged in that as well. We'll keep that up to date in the in the coming um, in the coming time. So go there, uh, tick the checkbox and say what you want to be acknowledged as. So Lastly, we've turned off the chat interface, and you might have seen that. And that's what probably most people uh, noticed first that the chats don't work anymore. The, the chats, and by the way, also the data collection platform, they are, they are distributed systems that are a nightmare to keep running. So th these are, these are real systems that run on hardware that is faulty people do all kinds of inputs, people bot the things, people abuse it, um, hardware fails, the back end workers on the GPUs fail and so on. And all of this has to be kept up and running. Um, Redis will overflow, all kinds of things, backups need to be made. This all requires active human effort. And as I said, we are overloaded, and we no longer have the capacity to do that. The chat system is fully open source, you know, you can use it. We feel when we started, there was nothing. Now, there is tons of stuff. There are hundreds of places where you can try out chat models, even our chat model. So on, on hugging chat, um, they, they will give you the opportunity to chat with these things. So it's more accessible than ever. We don't feel it's necessarily our purpose to provide yet another chat interface, especially if we don't have the capacity to keep it up. On top of that, that interface was actually partially sponsored by corporate sponsors, but also partially maintained by contributors to the Open Assistant project, giving their personal money into that. And, you know, it, it was really good to offer these models when they first came out because people wanted to try them out. But now there's so much opportunity everywhere. Um, that's, that's not necessary anymore. At least that is our feeling. So we wanted to start a revolution. I think that's what our front page said. And I think that's what we did. We got the open source space, or at least we had a small hand in getting the open source space, the ball rolling. Uh, we collected data that no one else could collect that's available now. And now the ecosystem is sprawling and more alive than ever. And yeah, we'll want to hand it off to other people. You know, now in the open source space, there's not just a few hackers around and a few people doing things there is, there are giant tech corporations like Meta meddling in the open source space, there are even universities from the Arab world, which are backed by entire nation states, right? So to 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 sort of uh, trying in the model training space and so on compete with that is is ridiculous, right? As for the data collection platform goes, as I said, this also requires a lot of human labor to keep it up and to keep it running and to keep it moderated. And we're looking currently into maybe giving it up uh, for adoption or something like this. But um, you know, we'd rather have, we'd rather have people take the code and whatnot, 
and pull up their own thing uh, rather, you know, because we think there's so much things to do. On that end, I want to, Lion has a few follow-up projects. One is called Open Empathic, uh, that deals around data collection for empathic conversations. So if you want to contribute to that, you can, if you want to contribute to something uh, now that Open Assistant is shutting down, uh, that would be a very good place. So in total, I know it's a bit, it's a bit, um, we have to say it with like one tear in an eye, but I feel mission accomplished. We have set out to collect the data necessary to train an open source chat GPT. We have set out to train these models and to make progress and to push a revolution in open source instruction models. And that's exactly what we've done. And the space is more alive than ever. So we feel we've done our part. And with the help of all of you, which we're extremely, extremely thankful for. I hope everyone can let sort of pat themselves on the back for this. And, you know, let's do new things. Let's do the next cool thing. Um, let's keep pushing and let's drive open source forward. I hope this was at least a bit informative. If you're upset, I understand. Um, I hope you can understand a bit from our side. I will be hosting an AMA uh, probably next week on the YouTube channel for everyone to come and ask their questions about this and, uh, you know, hopefully uh, figure out how to go forward. Yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you for contributing and I'll see you around. Bye-bye.